Okay, students in uh, Dr. Robinson's Ed Ed 810 class. My name is Steve Johnson, and I am the business and public policy librarian here at the University of South Dakota. I am also assigned to the Ed Leadership uh, Division of the School of Education. So I'm probably going to be the one you work with the most often. I'm also here with my colleague, Danielle Loftus, and then with uh, one of our student uh, students, uh, Elizabeth. What's your last name, Elizabeth? Hagerfield. Hagerfield, okay. Hello, this is Danielle. Okay, and then why don't you say hello, too? Hello. Okay, and uh, more than anything, uh, we'll talk for a half hour, maybe 45 minutes, on some things involving the USD databases. I think probably the most, my experience is the most important thing that you guys can do is the prep work that you do for before you sit down at the computer. And so that's what I want to emphasize the most. And if you go to the next slide. When you do a session, I mean, uh, you have... Okay, when you, I'm assuming you have your topic. In my case, um, for illustration purposes, a topic I know well because it was my wife's dissertation topic uh, 18 years ago is students who dropped out of high school in a city of 140,000 people, i.e. Sioux Falls, uh, but who opted to return to high school. What brought those students back? And that was the thrust of what my wife did for her dissertation. Uh, in 2000. Factors affecting dropouts and dropbacks is perceived by at-risk students in a Midwestern alternative high school uh, setting. Um, the long and the short end of it is for my session, and searching is about linking, linking one notion to that of another notion. want to deal with um, um, students who drop out of high school. I also want to deal with the uh, population that comes back to school. So if you go to the next screen, Elizabeth. All right, the one thing I can't emphasize enough is spend time uh, coming up with terms that, captive, that capture what your uh, topic is going to deal with. So um, we're dealing with dropouts. We're dealing with uh, school disengagement. We're dealing with high school students, uh, at-risk uh, students. Uh, re then re-entry students is a term I've heard. Uh, dropbacks was, was a term that one person used, too. Okay, and one of the things we'll talk about is where can you f uh, find these terms? And we'll get to that in a second. Go to the next screen. Okay, when you're dealing with any kind of a database, everybody, one of the things that's going to be really important is you get a sense of knowing what goes into the database. And it doesn't matter if it's a database that any of us create and uh, in a software package like Access, or if it's a database that we're using for uh, articles that we get here. This is an article, I thought this was a really interesting situation. It was an article written by the uh, great management theorist named Peter Drucker. And uh, it first appeared in Harvard Business Review, and then Harvard Business Review sold it to a trade publication called Information Week. And it appears twice under in the same database. But one of the things that was so interesting to me about this uh, article is that it would be hard to bring up both entries here. And so, um, you know, you, you want to try as many different things, as many different terms, as many different concepts as you possibly can. And so uh, come up with different terms. But what, what the thing I want to really emphasize is note how everything is assigned to a field, okay? For each item or record in the database, like the Harvard Business Review article, the Information uh, Week article, everything is assigned to, everything is broken down into fields. There's a field for the title of our article. There's, and titles are really good places to search because there's kind of an unwritten rule that the title should reflect what the article is about. The author or the author's names go into the author field. And then uh, what publication did it come out of? That might be the journal field. Uh, but probably the most important uh, fields are the subject field. Here, uh, uh, people who work for the database, uh, the databases have people who work for them, and they're known as indexers. And I think these indexers have probably the most god-awful job in the world. They have to go to a book called Tesaurus's, and I'll give you a sample of what's in a Tesaurus in a second. 
And then they come up with maybe half a dozen terms that capture the essence of what that article is about. Now, if you look at this uh, little exhibit that I came up with, uh, none of the subject headings are the same here. Uh, information systems on the left from the Harvard Business Review, executive strategic planning, activity-based costing. Then when the, uh, another in indexer uh, came across the article two, three months later, they assigned uh, for subjects business conditions, trends, information management requirements as uh, the subject headings that they're dealing with. The abstracts on what uh, came into this uh, database are uh, pretty remotely different too. So the long and the short end of it is don't take anything for granted. Come up with as many terms, I call them fallback terms, that you possibly can. Elizabeth, go to the next page, please. Okay, I talked about thesauruses, and that's what uh, the people at the databases work with. And here's something that I had for obsessive compulsive neuroses. I was dealing with a psychology class not too long ago. And th these things, they're part of the databases. They're also in books that we have in our library, but you know, all of you are scattered about, so I don't, ex I don't anticipate anybody using the books anymore. But the long and the short end of it is, they're in the database here, but uh, you'll see what do they mean by obsessive uh, compulsive neuroses. And that's, uh, you'll see s scope notes. Disorder characterized by recurrent obsessions or compulsions that may interfere with the individual's daily functioning. And then other terms that a person might use instead of obsessive. How about compulsive neuroses, uh, obsessive neuroses. But again, the database is signed, this is the term, and then they also have broader terms. B would be for, this falls under the realm of anxiety disorders. And then related terms, compulsion, compulsions, uh, obsessions. You want to come up, you want to make a list and you want to uh, jot all of those terms that are going to be really relevant to uh, your data, uh, to your uh, search. And then posting notes, subject codes are probably irrelevant. But uh, when you are in the databases, and we'll talk about this down the road, scope notes, uh, UF for used for, broader terms, narrower terms, related terms, and uh, things like that. Okay, we can go to the next page. Okay, the one thing, if I can emphasize anything in all of this, is that database searching isn't one-stop shopping. You're going to want to. You're not going to want to just use one database, like the Eric database. We have two education databases, uh, Eric and Education Research Complete, and. Um, we use different vendors for our uh, databases. A big database vendor that we have is called EBSCOhost. So everything will look identical in each of those databases. Eric, Education Research Complete. Uh, when my wife was working on her dissertation, there was a lot of material in the psychology database that wasn't in either of the education databases. In fact, Education Research Complete didn't even exist in those days. We have a database from the realm of sociology that could be very important to you. What is the sociologist dealing with your topic? And invariably, they probably are dealing with uh, your topic. There's some other, I put down a business uh, source premiere. I know um, there was, economists have done a lot on uh, different topics. In my, in my wife's case, they, d they had done a lot on, um, on, uh, on high school dropouts and the impact of that. Uh, we have an academic search premiere and a web of science database. They're going to have things that the other databases don't have. And sometimes the articles will be in that database, but the terms that, that you use in your query, what you're asking the database for, aren't going to be available to you. So um, I know another thing, going back to Deb's thing too, uh, uh, we have a database called PubMed, and then there's a second database it's pre pretty much the same thing called Medline. And uh, the issue of high school dropouts is, you know, there are a lot of uh, public health ramifications. So that uh, generated a lot of uh, material for her lit review and things. So, and then we'll, we have the dissertation uh, database too. Um, the dissertation database, it depends on the institutions, but we have most of the dissertations that have been uh, published since like 1995 throughout North America, and I think it's even going into 
um, the rest of the world right now. Some places have gotten all of their dissertations into the databases. Some places, 1995 and forward. Um, I don't know where we are on ours. Do you have any idea, Daniel? Yeah, I don't know if we... I know 1995 seems to be kind of uh, the starting point. It has been for a long time, so... But anyway, you're going to want to try each of these databases because each database here, everybody, uh, will have things that the other databases don't have. And so we'll talk. We'll spend a lot of time with Education Research Complete. We'll spend Eric. We'll get into some of the other databases and try to execute things there too. See if there's any other uh, slides that I did. Okay, a couple of last-minute things that we'll talk about during the session today. How can you set up a personal account? And with that personal account, how can you get uh, email messages sent to you uh, saying that there's an article uh, on the issue that you want to research? Or is there a journal that's uh, really dedicated to, your, uh, um, to the, your issue and things like that? We'll talk about that. Boolean operators. You're going to see that database searching takes a lot from algebra. And with that, and where you're linking uh, notions. In my case, it's high school dropouts, return to school, high school dropouts, and reentry students. Uh, truncation, that's going to be one of the most important tools that you have in your database uh, uh, toolkit, as I call it. Uh, because the, when you execute a search, if you input it, uh, you know, the singular concept of something, and it's in plural or vice versa, it's not going to, uh, it's going to slip through the cracks on you. It won't surface. What you input into the system has got to be exactly the way it appears in the databases. We'll talk about uh, return to school and how you can, uh, what you might want to do. And um, I'm a big believer in uh, quotation marks. I use parentheses there. I got the two confused, and I apologize for that. How can you isolate searches to particular journal articles? And then how can you get an article sent to you? Uh, and, and things like that. Through interlibrary loan or through the databases themselves. We'll uh, get to that. So that's the thrust of what we're going to deal with. Let's go to the, uh, let's go to our webpage. Okay, this is the webpage that we have at USD for the USD library. And uh, you can, you might want to write this down. It's going to be www.usd edu and then front slash the word library. And then on the left hand side, why don't we just focus on the left hand side. Um, you'll see the research tools. That's one way you can get into the databases. You can also go down to where it says uh, underneath the picture here and then in this black bar right here, books and more. What do we have in our library catalog and things? Databases. What do we have in the databases? Our uh, library probably has in the realm of 300 different databases. And so the third entry right there where it says journals and ebooks, um, how can you find out if a particular uh, journal is available to you uh, through the databases you're in? That's going to be important. Then our library is doing more and more and more with uh, books that are online. That could be very, very uh, important. Research guides, Danielle and uh, people have done just a magnificent job uh, with uh, research guides to help you guide you along the way. Interlibrary loan. I'm a believer if our library does anything well, it's interlibrary loan. Often we're getting material to people the same day that they make the request. Uh, we know, uh, libraries like us know we have to work smart. We can't be all things to all people. Other libraries can't be that way. So libraries are very, very good at pooling what they have with one another. Elizabeth, click on databases right there. Okay. And then um, click the Go button. Yeah, click right there. Okay. Um, the, I said 300, 228 databases up here, but uh, Eric and Education Research Complete are probably going to be where you want to do a lot of your databases. So what she could do, what Elizabeth could do is click on the letter E for Edward, 
And then scrolling down a wee bit. Okay, I see education research complete. Why don't you click on that? Well, pro okay. Then this is the interface screen. The interface screen is where we formulate the queries for the databases. At the very top right here, you'll, uh, uh, why don't you go high school dropouts? Okay, and then below that, let's do this. Um, go return to school. Okay, and this is going to be a sample database or a sample search. It, maybe it's going to work, maybe it's not going to work, but that's all, that's the thrust of what the database searching is going to be about. We've linked high school dropouts to return to school. Now we may have to tweak what we've input there. Um, Elizabeth, some other things. Um, we can go down to where it says scholarly peer reviewed publications and then click on search at the top there. Let's see if we get anything. Okay. Here we're told we have about 11 uh, items that uh, surface for us. Okay, and my sense with this topic is it kind of had its uh, heyday in the 1990s, the early 2000s, and then there hasn't been a lot published since then. But uh, that said, let's just, it's a good topic for me to illustrate with. Okay, a note on the return of dropouts to school. When you look at things here, you're going to get different aspects here. You'll get who are the authors of this article. And then in the first one, uh, what publication did it come out? Studies of the education of uh, authors. Okay, this is a pretty dated article, October of 1996, so 21, 22 years ago. You'll get an abstract. This is a short abstract. But that abstract will kind of help you pick and choose what looks really relevant to you. S assuming that this is an article that looks good to you, Elizabeth, up in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see that file folder. It's in blue there. Click on that, and then um, why don't you click on the one right below that? And let's go down just a wee bit more. Okay, and why don't you click on number five? From the database here, and this database is really good about making the articles that, uh, that come up for you available to you. You'll see the PDF icon. Uh, okay, click, yeah, I want you to click on where it says PDF. And let's bring up this article here from, I, don't, I didn't catch when it was from, but. Okay, so you would have this article at your disposal no matter where you are. You could be in Timbuktu and you would. Uh, uh, have this accessible to you. This was an article, can you tell when it's from? 2006. Okay, natives, the foreign born, high school equivalents, and things like that. Back to the result list at the top there. Okay, some other things that'll come to play. Go to the top right here. Those, let's say that these were the three articles that looked really, really good to what we wanted to do. So, if, Elizabeth, if you take it way to the top on the sidebar there, then one thing that's going to be important is there's a component called folder. Okay, remember we saved those three here? And these were the three that we saved. Now, number article number one. Uh, not available in this database here. It's a pretty dated one. Do, does USD have any database that would make this uh, article from 1983 available to us? Again, I hate using stuff that's so old, but that's just the thrust of the, that's just the nature of the beast. Where it says you get it in USD Red, she'll click there. And we'll come to this screen. Do we have it? Don't we have it? Okay, I don't see any database here. So then, you've got to make USD work for it, for you through Interlibrary Loan. And you'll see the entry right down here that says USD slash Law Iliad. Iliad is the software that we call our Interlibrary Loan system. She'll click here. Do you have an Interlibrary Loan account? Okay, oh, let me do mine. Okay, and then in the box right here, this is me. I won't share my password with you. It's the same thing that you'd use to get your USD email. 
Okay, and then uh, click on that login to Iliad button. What did they tell us? Oh, I just changed my password. I'm sorry. Good habits. I never change mine. <laughs> oh, I got a message from our friends. Okay. Okay, try it again. All right, you'll see that everything is uh, uh, all the boxes that say required are populated, except for the one that says author. And uh, do you have any idea why that's not populating? It's different databases do different things. So it must okay. Be just with education research complete. So, so in the, if that's the case, uh, I don't know who the authors of this article are from back in 1983, but what I do is I'll go like an N slash A in that box, not applicable or something. You've just got to get something there. You could go one, two, three, four or something, but you've got to get something into that box. And then scrolling to the bottom there, um, is there something you need to tell us that you need? Maybe you need this right away. Uh, so there's a notes box there. Um, the people in interlibrary loan are really, really sensitive to that. Again, uh, I'm always impressed with the work they do. But assuming that everything's all set to go, all of the boxes that say required are filled in, then all we would have to do here um, is click on the green box, but let's not do it because we don't need, I don't feel like reading the article and things like that. But that's all you would do. And then my hope is by today being Friday that uh, Danielle, Elizabeth, and I are working on this, uh, my hope is you'd have it uh, Monday afternoon, if not Tuesday, sometime on Tuesday, the article. We would go to wherever we go to. We're really lucky in this part of uh, the country because we're in a three-state uh, three region. It's the two Dakotas, North and South Dakota, along with uh, Minnesota. And our hub for interlibrary loan is the University of Minnesota, Wilson Library at the University of Minnesota, and all the department libraries. The likelihood, if anybody has something that you need, it's going to be the University of Minnesota. They'll scan the article, they send it to us, and then using your USD email account, uh, and that's the only way you can get stuff sent to you through that USD email account. So if you don't have one, make sure that you get one. Uh, click the green button, at, or um, um, oh, you'll open your email, and then there'll be a link to it, and then press out the articles there for you to download, to send to the printer, to do whatever you want with it. Send it on to your best friend, whatever you want. Uh, you can do all of that. So. Uh, did I miss anything out there, do you think, or anything you want to add? Okay, either of you guys. Okay, so that's interlibrary loan, uh, and how do we find other databases? We'll talk about this a little bit more right now. Why don't you, at the top there on those tabs there, click where, uh, close out the Iliad article request, click out Discovery, and then let's go back up again, or, um, let's go to, uh, hit your back button once and probably a second time. Okay, okay. let's um, let's keep it here. Again, you can see what we've uh, done here. Now, uh, some tricks that you might want to think about, and these are important. Uh, I'm a big believer in putting quote marks around uh, phrases, okay? And so what, I'm, what Elizabeth might do is, before the H in high school, put a quote mark, and then um, get rid of the S, in dropout, and then put an asterisk there. That asterisk is a truncation symbol. It's going to generate anything with dropout, dropouts, dropped out, anything that you want to go. And then close off the quote marks. Quote marks, what they do for us is um, they keep the three words side by side. You won't get something in line 20 that's a, with the word high. Uh, line 65 has school, line 288 has the word dropout. Those three words are going to be side by side. Then let's go down to where it says return to school. And um, again, let's uh, put quote marks uh, before that. And then uh, after the L in school. 
And then let's do something at two when it comes to return. And uh, put the truncation symbol, that asterisk, the shift eight right after that. So that's going to give us returning to school, returned to school with an ED, return to school, uh, returns to school with an S at the end, and things like that. Again, truncation sign, the quote marks. We had 11 on our first go round. Elizabeth, hit the search button again. Okay, here we took it down to nine, but I'm seeing articles that I didn't see on the first go around. Again, um, um, we could click on that You Get It button, but we won't do that here. This was an article that just came out in August, and the database does something else that I find really interesting. When uh, Blackman uh, wrote this article in the Journal of Research in Crime and Delinquency, uh, Blackman used 56 uh, articles for, to support his article, to support the research in his article. What are those 56 articles? Um, and sometimes that's a good way to find material that doesn't surface for you in the database. Um, why don't you click on that Cite It Reference button and then right there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so these would be the articles that uh, Blackman used, where, wherever Blackman's coming from. And you see the You Get It button. If there's something that's really on the money for what you're dealing with, you might click on that You Get It uh, button and things. So um, back, go back to where we were just a second ago, too. Another thing that I find really interesting with these databases, too, is since August, when this article by uh, Back Blackman came out, uh, one person after Blackman uh, cited the article in their research. Uh, that might be a really... Click on that for a second. Okay. Sharing the burden and transition, something that came out just this uh, last month. Uh, adult African American young adults transition challenges their mothers. Uh, I don't know if this is dealing with high school dropouts, but it's always worthwhile just to see what's uh, available there. And again, some things that can come into play there. Remember the blue box, the blue file folder. If this was something that looked really cool, you could uh, she could click on that file folder, and then when she goes back to folder at the top. That's going to be there waiting for her, waiting for her, and then uh, she can deal with the things that she wants to deal with. Click your button again. Okay, I only have eight articles here, but um, some things that to factor in. Often, I'm a believer in, when I look at things, check things off from that file folder. And then after you've checked, let's say we went with six of the eight articles, then go up to the folder and uh, look at it again, and it'll be there until you log out. We'll talk about we'll talk about how you can. Why don't you click that folder once again? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so far we've uh, clicked on these. Now the instant we log out of all of the uh, databases put out by this vendor called EBSCOhost, then we lose this unless we set up an account for ourselves. And we'll do that in a wee bit, too, because I think that's really worthwhile to uh, keep. Okay, um, let's try, um, hit your back button, or um, X out of EBSCO host right here. And then uh, there's another database, and this is kind of the grandparent of education databases. It's called the ERIC database, and... Um, Let's do something here. Remember we talked about subject headings earlier? Okay, the subject headings, I call, uh, said they come from the Tesaurus. So, Elizabeth, click on where it says Tesaurus. And then in the middle box right here, um, why don't you go um, high school dropouts? What we're wanting is every... Uh, we want to know if this is a subject heading. And subject headings are... Uh, really, in my opinion, they're really an efficient way to look for material. Okay, that's really on the money. You're not going to get high numbers, uh, 100 or 1,000 articles, but you're going to get some. Um, click on the Browse button. And then, okay, instead of uh, using high school dropouts, 
the database says use dropouts. So then Elizabeth will click on dropouts right there. <coughs> And then check your dropout uh, dropout box. I need one more favor from you too. We want it to be dropouts and reentry or dropouts and return to school. So what we have to do is we have to change or to and to make that happen. We don't want anything about either dropouts or return to school or reentry. Uh, but click on add. Okay, and then uh, Elizabeth in that box where you have high school dropouts. Get rid of that and go return to school. Let's see if they have a subject heading for that. Okay, return to education, return to school. Okay, I don't have anything there. Elizabeth, get rid of return to school. And in this case, go re-entry. Perfect. Clicking that. Okay, ah, oh, I got re-entry students. Okay, uh, let's see what re-entry students entail. So clicking there, okay, and what they're saying is continuation. Uh, okay, we don't have a scope note here, but the long in the sh uh, stopouts, okay, that's something we could have added to our list at the beginning. Uh, high school students, um, Tell you what, click on to the left of reentry students, check that, and then hit your add button right there. Okay, here we're telling the system through the word and, we're telling the system give us anything that was assigned dropouts as a subject heading as well as reentry students. Again, we're, we're uh, working on the backs of the indexers. Okay, then there's that search button to the right of that, so Elizabeth will click on that. Okay, I've got 132 articles here, or items here. Now, in the ERIC database, you're going to have journal articles here. You're also going to have what are called ERIC documents. Uh, those might be, oh, like um, um, white papers that somebody did on a particular subject. They didn't go through the, what's called the peer-reviewed process that I suspect you guys have been talking about. Uh, they often don't. Uh, you might also get somebody's, I don't know if you get PowerPoint slides there, but... Not an Eric. Not an Eric. But you're going to get... Um, well, it's been a while since I've dealt with Eric documents. All those reports. You get tons of reports. Yeah, you get tons of reports. And they may be from the government, maybe the state government. Uh, but in this case, let's uh, just focus on scholarly uh, reports there, or scholarly journal articles. Okay, and then we go from 1983. We have 50 here. We have from Norway. Uh, one building, okay, we have from South uh, Africa. Um, bring up the Norway one, just real quick. Okay, and I'm wondering if there's a field that says where, where the article focuses on. Okay, this database doesn't do that, but... How about right underneath there, where it's in quote marks? Why don't you go United States? Okay, we had 50. Let's see what transpires this go around. Okay, uh, one item here. We have some other issues here. This is dealing with uh, college students who have withdrawn and maybe have come back to school kind of deal. Don't want that. Obviously, we want to get rid of United States. Okay, and then clicking the search button once again. And then, okay, characteristics of, um, okay, we have Eric documents here. Uh, that's funny because we clicked the button for a scholar. I don't know why that would have surfaced. Any? Maybe the resources from? Regional Educational Laboratory West is peer reviewed somehow? Yeah, that could be, that could be. You'll see the uh, you'll see the abstract you get there. Um, in this case, right below the paragraph, it says full text from Eric, and then you get the subjects here that you're dealing with. One thing we might want to do, guys, is uh, you see where it says subjects, high school students. 
Elizabeth, can you go up and then type in high school students? Mm -hmm. No, right below that, yeah. And then I got another favor before you hit the enter key. To the right of that, clicking there, okay, we're looking for, again, the subject, so where it says SU space descriptors, those are interchangeable terms. Subject descriptors, subject headings, uh, clicking that place, and then clicking search. Okay, we've taken it down to 10 items here. But uh, scrolling down, again, if anything looks good to you, the folder on the upper right-hand corner, pick maybe three of them, Elizabeth. Going there, going there, going there. And then um, head back up to the top, hit that folder button. We should have three items here. Okay, yeah, those are the three we just saved. And okay, none of items one and three aren't available. So again, the million dollar issue here is um, hit the you get it button on one of them, yeah. Do we have it? Don't we have it? Do we have to go through interlibrary loan? By all means, take advantage. Okay, in this case, we have uh, two databases, the JSTOR database, as well as um, we get, we get, Wiley is a big, big, big publisher for uh, university uh, research. And so we have a, a big, we have Wiley's online library subscription, which is really great. But Elizabeth, on the top right there, click on JSTOR. Whatever name of the, whatever publication this was from. Okay, and then um, here's the article right here from the Journal of Adolescent and Adult Literacy. Uh, she'll click on download the PDF. Okay. Uh, She's going to uh, play by their rules, so she'll click that blue button right there. And then here should be the article. And then press, so you get a cover page here, and then as she moves down, here would be the article as it appeared way back and when, and things like that. So, so anyway, that you get it button is going to be a really important component to what you're working with. The most important thing, and I can't emphasize this enough, is keep asking questions. You have my email address. I'll send Dr. Robinson uh, something to just to kind of summarize what uh, what we've been going over. But those are going to be available to you. Um, Elizabeth, can we close out a lot of these uh, screens? Yeah, close that. Close discovery. Back to here. Um, Elizabeth, close uh, that one too. Uh, Go back up again. Um, other databases that are put out by this EBSCO company. P for Psych Info. Okay, and then um, Psych Info is right there. And it's put out by EBSCO again. Looks similar, operates the uh, same way. And then uh, you'll find articles. My guess is. 40, maybe even half of the articles that surface here, you wouldn't have seen in the education database. Uh, some other tricks that you can do too, uh, you see where it says choose databases, Elizabeth? Clicking that, okay, and we can search two databases at once. We can search psych and then what's coming out of the realm of sociology? So she can click there. And then click on the OK button at the, either the top or the bottom. And then we're searching two databases at once. How about in quote marks, let's go high school dropout. And then put an uh, asterisk right after that. And then a quote mark again. And let's see how many articles come up for us this case. And then we'll tinker with it to get it down to... Okay, we have about 1,400 articles that are coming out of both fields and things like that. Sociological Perspectives came out just at the end of 2017. Um, journal, we saw the Backman article earlier. Um, yeah, we have a lot of databases here, or a lot of articles that we, didn't, we wouldn't have known. So again, it's not one-stop shopping, and that's the one thing I really want to hit home, hit home on. 
nobody in their right mind, though, Elizabeth, including Elizabeth, wants to look at 1,400 items on the screen. You'll, go, you'll lose your sanity. So let's do this, Elizabeth. And right below high school dropouts in the box, would you go quote mark? And then let's do return and then put an asterisk after the end and return. So return, return, returns, returning. And then um, go the word two. And then space again. Go the word school. And then close off your quote marks. Okay, and then close on search. Okay, here it came down to 19. 19 is a really good number to work with and things. So, okay, uh, we'll also get dissertations and we'll talk about the dissertation database in a way that high school dropouts that return to school, somebody's dissertation. Kaufman's always been a big name in this field and things. Temporary as compared to permanent high school dropout and things. What brings the, these guys back? Again, this is kind of a, I would say, pro, I said early 2000s. It looks like it's more like middle middle to late 2000s. And then this, uh, this issue kind of looks like it kind of dropped off uh, the map and stuff for whatever reasons. Maybe, it was, maybe the topic was tapped out. I don't know. An empirical study of re-enrollment behavior, okay, from applied economics. Remember I said economists, what the economist does on issues. That was from 94. Okay, youth returning to school, identities imposed, enacted, resisted, explored, and stuff. I remember we saw number seven uh, earlier. Uh, I thought we brought, yeah, 1983. Factors of high school dropouts, success stories of former dropouts or earned college degrees and things like that. So again, uh, and you'll have dissertations here. We can pinpoint things so you can uh, uh, go to the top again. Remember in here, uh, there's uh, the boxes here, limit to. Um, she can either click on scholarly or she can click on journal. 11 of the items are, okay, 10 of the items here of the 19 articles are journal articles. Nine were obviously dissertations, probably. Again, we're tapping two fields at once here. So, um, I talked about, again, the uh, business database. I think for a lot of topics, again, I think the economists might be, and they really, really cover an issue really well and give a good historical uh, overview of how that issue transpired and things like that was, that was my experience with that kind of material. So um, so we know about those four or five databases. Uh, there's a Medline database that this outfit uh, publishes too. Again, this is a topic that's going to have a lot in the way of uh, public health ramifications. Okay. Um, some, okay, let's try some other databases that we have too. Uh, there's a database, if she click on W, W for Web of uh, Science, don't let the title of the database throw you off because there's a lot of really good uh, material here. Now, for, I, I hate how they have things set up here. Uh, remember, going back to what I've been uh, babbling about, searching is linking one notion to another notion. Uh, Elizabeth, click on Add Another Field. Going up here, um, let's go uh, high school dropouts again, and again in quote marks too, please. And then, yeah, okay, and then closing that. And then, um, let's call them re-entry. Okay, and then uh, search it again. This database is really good about generating the top uh, tier journal articles for a given field. Okay, this probably doesn't, uh, well, maybe it's on the money, maybe it's not, I can't tell one way or the other. The database itself isn't gonna provide the articles, but uh, you'll always, for every entry here, you'll have that you get it button. And then we have it in these databases here. 
uh, or from these uh, journal vendors uh, here, publishers, uh, X out of discovery there. Hit your um, back button again. Okay, re-entry or, um, tell you what, after re-entry, uh, hit your spacebar, please. And then in cap capital letters, go the word OR. Okay, and then space it again. And then in quote marks, let's go return. And then asterisk, return, return, returning. And then space again. Go to 2, T-O. And then school, and then close off the... Uh, Okay, here what we're telling the system is this. System, give us everything where the words high school dropouts appear, and then either from the standpoint of the one article that had the word re-entry or that have returned to school. Let's see if anything meets our condition here. Okay, we took it up from one to five, but you can see how this... But again, this is going to be some of the better material. I think this is going to be some really good uh, material here. Uh, what's number four? When was that published? 1997. Um, basic and applied. Okay, number three. I don't remember from any of the other databases here. Bring up number three. We're in the uh, yeah, right there, please. Okay, would return to school the hypothetical high school students. Again, it goes back to this, uh, Mike. The statement I've been making to you all through the afternoon is uh, try different databases because this was something, even though it's from 1999, I didn't see it in the education databases. Don't lock yourself into the two education databases, Education Research Complete or ERIC, but it did surface here in things. So, so anyway, any questions from either of you two? Anything that we should be dwelling on? It's a good coverage of all the resources that they could use that they'll find valuable. Yeah, and things like that. And again, the key is asking questions too. Try the databases. You can't break the uh, database down or anything for anything you do from home, from work, whatever. But try and see what you come up with. And, uh, and then stay in touch with me. And uh, um, Dr. Robinson will give you my email address and things like that. Um, some things too with these databases, um, especially these databases. Elizabeth, you see where it says DOI? Highlight that whole thing there. Okay, and this is called a digital object identifier, right? And every article should be assigned this number here. So if you find something and you need the article at a later point in time, you can just input this into something that we'll talk about. Uh, and then the article, it'll take you to exactly where that article is and things like that. Danielle is going to be talking about the EndNote uh, software package. And that is going to be really invaluable to the work that you do. Because you're going to have to be dealing with so many articles and to keep those things organized and everything is going to be really important. Um, Elizabeth, let's do some other things. Um, okay, uh, why don't you click out of Web of Science? And why don't we go to um, um, go to A for Academic or Academic Search Premier? You can go right there too. Okay, what a person can do too is you can create your own account too and you can work in here. Elizabeth, where it says sign in, click there. And okay, um, we need a username. I'll just use mine here. Steve J.O. And then click that. Okay, now in the upper left hand corner it says my EBSCO host if you want to log into here what you find here um, Elizabeth go high school dropouts okay and then let's tell the system too it's got to be scholarly it's got to be full text this is kind of a general database and it's a really really useful database it's worth tap with all of these things Okay, so 324 items here. 
middle school predictors. I remember when Deb, my wife Deb, was dealing with this. Those were really important here. But the long and the short end of it is, uh, take like those first three items there, Elizabeth. Yeah, make those yellow, the blue. Okay, and then clicking there, and then clicking there, and then go up to folder. These will be waiting for you here for perpetuity purposes. As long as you have USD access to the databases uh, and you don't take these out of the databases, the, uh, what you've saved here, and I've saved other things too, they'll always be here until you delete them or um, you can also create own folders here. Again, you're, prob you're gonna be better off working with the EndNote software, but this can be really, really useful too. You'll want to move it to uh, EndNote, and it's real easy to do that. And Danielle will be talking about that, too. How can you, uh, you'll see an email component here. How can I send off whatever I've checked off to email, and then I can email articles to myself. But I can at least have some record of what I was dealing with. And again, on the far left-hand side, look at the things that, uh, look at the things that we've saved uh, that I created uh, just for myself and then those articles. Um, click on like that HBR items, I don't know if I have. Go up, yeah, right there. Okay, so fifth, uh, click it once again. Okay, I have 55 articles that I've uh, uh, plowed into this thing here and stuff, so. Okay, so we have that. Um, I don't know if Dr. Robinson is uh, talking about, we'll be talking about the dissertation database. Um, why don't we just do something real quick and dirty in that, and then we can always get back to that, too. Um, Elizabeth, X out of the EBSCOhost, um, clicking D for dissertations. Now, we have two components here. What's our story here? Um, go to Oh, there it is, yeah. Clicking that. Okay, and uh, you, have a, you have one interface screen here, uh, but you can also, this is called the basic interface screen. You can see that up in the upper left-hand corner. Elizabeth, why don't you click advanced? And then um, in quote marks, why don't you go high school dropouts? Okay, and then uh, right below that, um, I've heard the term drop back. They drop back into school, okay? And then put an asterisk after the K, so drop back, drop backs. Let's see if there's anything there for us. Okay, um, 13 items here, you know, have the terms. A quantitative study, okay, from 1995. Somehow the system has this knack for uh, what it see, what its algorithms see as rel the most relevant to the least relevant. You can also set things up, and I like to do this: going there and then going the most recent first, the most recent articles first. Okay, and then 2007 dropping out of high school, a focus group approach. Uh, dissertation, but these are going to be available to you, and then there'll be some other things too that could be really useful. Um, okay, cite it by two, cite it by, you can see if it's been cited by anybody else. Okay, Sean Haley's from the University of Texas. Try, try that, okay, so cite it by seven. These would probably be the R13. Try cite it by seven again. Okay, yeah, seven documents, uh, either uh, dissertations cited this article, or um, maybe it was a journal article that cited the dissertation. Scroll to the bottom there just real quick. Okay, looks like it's all dissertations from what I can tell. But again, you can see what's available. You can see that you have access to all of these things. And with these dissertations too, 
the instruments that they utilize will be at the, uh, toward the end of the deal. So uh, you'll have access to that and things. So that is, a, in a nutshell, what I would say is most important on our databases. Again, you want to stay in touch with us, with me, with my colleagues and things. So even if you're a long way from USD, um, email, we can talk on the phone and we can do other things too. So can you think of anything else we should be dwelling on? Sounds good. Okay. A little bit different than it is when you speak in front of all of you.